It's a strange title. It's not often that you see the word green next to petroleum. I hope that in the next few minutes I can explain why I believe that the words can fit together and why it is that this sort of effort can make a great deal of difference in the lives of many, many people, in fact, of all of us who live on this planet. So, we start with some facts. I apologize, I'm an engineer. And here's a fact. Current world petroleum production is 86 million barrels a day. Now, most of us don't work with barrels on a regular basis, so I'm going to translate that a little bit. That's 3.5 billion gallons of petroleum a day. Well, let's get to something a little closer. That's more than 75 billion gallons of gasoline a day. All right? That's a lot of energy. Now let's ask ourselves, what if we don't use this? How are we going to replace it? Well, if we were to replace that amount of energy with geothermal, solar, wind, and water, you see on this rather busy slide what we need and what we have. Those numbers are frightening. You will see that only with hydroelectricity are we anywhere close to supplying part of that need. Everything else is about 1%. What does this say? This says we have a very long way to go before we say no more petroleum. So that's fact number one. Here's another fact. Sorry that it's a very busy slide, but what I'd like you to focus on is the fact that petroleum reserves happen to exist in many environmentally and socially conflicted areas. Focus, if you will, please, on the yellow. The yellow represents high biodiversity. Focus on the green. Clearly, you'll recognize that the green are our tropical rainforests. The Amazon, parts of Africa, Borneo, places where we need what's there to keep helping us with what we breathe. Environment. I show you a picture. This is not atypical, in fact, it's more typical than not, of what is done in the Amazon region, the upper regions of the Amazon, Ecuador to be precise. And what you see in the background is flaring. What is flaring? Flaring is what happens when you're extracting stuff out of the ground, namely petroleum. A lot of other stuff comes with it, including gas, natural gas, and the sort. Now, suppose you don't want that natural gas. What do you do? You burn it. Look at that. That's going on all the time. Look at the uh, uh, sludge pit. That also is waste that comes from the uh, petroleum extraction uh, process. And yes, it's got um, petroleum in it, and so it burns, and of course it makes uh, the, the sort of uh, dramatic picture that you see there. Is this necessary? The answer is no. Technology exists has existed for years. You can capture that gas. You can use that gas as an energy source to drive generators and whatever else. You can re-inject this stuff that is burning in the foreground. But that technology, although it exists, is expensive. And if I'm a producer, I put my product out on the market. And the guy down the street does the same. If I use best practice by using expensive technology, the market doesn't recognize that. My barrel of oil commands the same price as the guy down the street. I do not have an economic incentive to do and use better practice. Social conflict. Early days of uh, grinding away with petroleum and exploration and production, companies would just come in and do what they wanted. To this day, that continues a lot, particularly in, shall we say, less advanced uh, uh, nations or territories. But the local people, the indigenous people, uh, the people who are going to be directly affected 
uh, around the area of uh, exploration and production are no longer the same people that they were before. They have seen what can happen, and you end up with these sorts of things. Again, this is a picture from a, a recent situation in Quito, Ecuador. Basically, people saying, no, we don't want this. Uh, that leads to social conflict, it leads to strife, it leads to strikes, it leads to violence, and very often it leads to death. So now let me change gears. Let me talk about certification. What's certification? Certification means that when you see a particular logo or sign on a product, it represents a process by which that product has been developed. It tells you something about that product. So for example, if you see here fair trade, that tells you that this product has been uh, created from start to finish, from where it was grown, where it was harvested, all the way through the chain, until you buy it at this grocery store in, on the shelf in a responsible manner. The people who have been planting and harvesting have a decent place to do it. They're treated fairly. They are paid fair wages and so forth up the line. Fair trade today commands a market of over $5 billion a year and growing, right? and growing, which is very important. Kimberly process, perhaps you know of this one. If you want to go buy a diamond, then you have perhaps some choices, not only just the store, but the purveyor of said diamonds. All of us, not all of us, perhaps many of us have seen the movie Blood Diamonds and the horror that it represents in terms of conflicted areas where diamonds are extracted. The Kimberly process is a process whereby when you buy a diamond, you can trace it all the way back to the source, where it came out of the river or the mine or wherever it is, and that source is a place of fair treatment of the workers, is not funding guerrillas, is not funding weapons, it's not funding war. Today, over 90% of the diamonds sold in North America and Western Europe, Kimberly process. It's changing things. Forest Stewardship Council. What is that? Forest Stewardship Council is wood. Right? When you buy a wood product, where did that wood come from? What FSC, Forest Stewardship Council, guarantees that that wood came from a sustainable uh, harvest. In other words, as the wood is taken out, more trees are planted, things are done well. Okay? That, for FSC, commands a market of over $25 billion today. Where am I going with this? Hopefully you will see. Last fact, and then we get to the point. This shows the growth in consumer demand for certified products. It happens to be a slide just for the UK, but the same thing is true here in the States and throughout Western Europe. More products, more growth, even in a time of economic difficulty. You will see that in 2008, 2009, and so forth, still growing. Okay, so what's the answer? Certify petroleum. Certify petroleum and you will provide an economic incentive to do the right thing. How does it work? An extractor is certified. There's a set of standards you have to follow and they range from labor practice, environmental, everything. One barrel gives you one certificate if you're, certi if you're certified. That certificate then trades on a market the value of that certificate monetizes your best practice. Simple concept. Here's the economic incentive. We're back to world petroleum being 86 million barrels a day. If 1% is certified and that certificate is worth $1, which is 1% of basically the cost of a barrel of oil today, that would be $860,000 per day to certified extractors. With those sorts of numbers, and that's just 1%, with those sorts of numbers, you no longer can say, oh, I can't do this. You no longer can say, no shareholder value. You no longer can say all those things. This rewards good practice, and it rewards it in an economical manner. It's market-driven. If I want to sell gasoline, 
that is certified, I need to buy certificates. 22 gallons of gasoline on average per barrel of oil. Well, if I want to sell a million gallons of gasoline that is certified, I have to buy the corresponding number of certificates. Same thing goes for plastic products, because plastic, after all, comes from petroleum as well. So consumer demand drives the certificate price that encourages producers to certify production. Back to facts. Petroleum, world's largest industry. Derived petro products derived from petroleum are everywhere. You're sitting on them. You're walking on them. I'm wearing them, okay? Aside from cars and gasoline and all those sorts of things. We're going to use petroleum for a long time. Right now, there's no existing certification standard. So certify. Reward socially and environmental con environmentally conscious corporate behavior. Give consumers a choice. When you go into Whole Foods, how many things do you actually look at? When you go into the east side market, when you go into whatever supermarket of your choice, do you consciously go and say, oh, fair trade, I want this? A lot of people do. That's what those curves were showing about the growth in demand. Ethical consumerism. You've heard about it. That's what uh, we need to do with the petroleum industry. Consumers decide. We can do this. This is a, uh, just a shot from a recent business week. And what it says is, imagine a world in which socially responsible and eco-friendly practices actually boost a company's bottom line. It can be done. We are trying to do this, and it's for the greater good of everybody. Thank you very much.